Hi, my name is Ian. Welcome to the show. As a young boy, I was blessed with parents that bought myself and my brother some Lego and we played from there. Unfortunately, like most Apples, I had a dark age and didn't build any Lego models. I started building Meccano models as I had Meccano pieces at home, starting building small cranes and wanted to do bigger cranes and then not having enough Meccano. Um, unfortunately, because Meccano got quite scarce and very, very expensive, that was a hobby that I couldn't keep up with. I realized that everything is not as precise and it doesn't line up like I wanted to. And a friend of mine said, but why don't you build in Lego Technique? As the tolerances are a lot better and you don't have all the issues with misalignment. So I started building in Technique and found that I could build bigger and better models than what I did in Meccano. Because of my the work that I do and the environment that I work in, I get to, to work with cranes quite often. I found this uh, model in, in one of the old Meccano magazines where there was a floating barge crane. And it was a crane that really appealed to me and I wanted to build this crane. I then started doing some research to the history about this crane, where it came from, what the crane was used and in what era it was used. In 1937, the German military ordered four cranes from DMAC. The interesting thing is not one of these cranes were a mirror copy of the other one. Each of them had different functions and also differed in scale. The crane that I built was crane number one. The order was sent in 1937 and it was completed in 1941 and it was then commissioned as well. The nice thing about this crane is it's a level luffing crane that sits on a barge so it can be moved in a harbour with some guidance from tugboats and then the propulsion that it's got and it's got amazing capabilities. There's a total of five reading blocks on the crane. Two of them are rated at a 350 ton. Then you've got two smaller blocks at 50 ton. And then there was a auxiliary block that was that's a 10 ton block. So there were four cranes. One crane was damaged during the war. After the war, the Allied forces got hold of the three cranes. One went to the USA. One was given to Russia and the last crane was given to Britain. The British army unfortunately um, sunk one of the barges while on tow and that was lost. Then the Russian one was rebuilt in Russia and the US one was rebuilt and used um, in the naval shipyard for maintenance on uh, other seafaring vessels. In 1997, um, there was a period where the crane was then stripped down and rebuilt due to maintenance that was needed on the crane and it was moved to Panama. Unfortunately, the 10 ton auxiliary block was then removed from the original crane due to some damages and that just wasn't economical to repair the crane. There were two functions. First of all, they were used to erect harbour cranes to help with the loading and offloading from cargo ships. They were also used for uh, maintenance on some of the U-boats. These submarines were, they were not as big as the ones that we've got now with nuclear subs. They were quite smaller and diesel subs. So they were removed from the water, put into dry docks. The drive propulsion systems were maintained uh, whereby they were picked out of the water, split in half, um, maintenance was done, new mo engines was fitted, and then uh, after commissioning, then be placed back in the water again. Where the four floating barge cranes come into play is that, especially in number one, at the function where it could do its own top and tail lift. So with a 350 ton block, it could do the main part of the lift, and then with a 50 ton blocks, you could then slightly lift the, the load so that it doesn't drag either on the barge or from the harbor onto a cargo vessel or anything like that. One of the things that I wanted to do is try and stick as close as possible to the color scheme of the crane that's currently in Panama. 
the crane there is the, the main boom is white and, and red and then the rest of the crane is it's in a darkish grey colour and there's obviously being a harbour crane there's a fair amount of rust on it. To replicate that I built the main boom in red and then the body I built in dark bluish grey and then the biggest challenge was to get the scale of the crane sorted out. Um, as there's no blue pins for these cranes anymore, I had to find out what the vessel's number is currently being used in Panama to at least get some photos and some features of the crane. I was lucky on one of the photos, the vessel number is clearly indicated as Yankee Delta 171. After I found that, I could go to the Naval Archives, uh, the US Naval Archives, and I could get some info on the crane. One of the things that I got was the original lifting table for the crane. The lifting table is in, um, in feet and in yards, so I converted that to Lego scale, and the scale turned out to be 1 to 115, which even building it to that scale, the crane is still fairly big and fairly heavy and it used a huge amount of parts. Um, there was more than once that I actually ran out of parts and I had to break up more and more set of my other sets to, to bolt the crane. On the, on the body panels for the barge, I used 66 body panels, which is a 5 by 11 body panel and it will already give you a size indicator of the size of the crane. Um, the crane at the moment, if I have to box it to move it around, the length of the barge is 650 millimeters and the width of the barge is 350 millimeters. Uh, so yeah, it is a fairly, fairly big, big model. The crane is operated via 10 different motors. The first big motor is there's an extra large motor in the barge and that is for the swing. So that's your, your turning of your mask left and right. Then there's a large motor which does the luffing. That will be the, the up and down movement of the mask. And then there's eight medium motors that's used for all the winches on the, on the barge crane. I said that there's, there's five blocks, the two 350s, the 250 tons and the 110 ton. But each of the 50 ton blocks also have a trolley that moves it backwards and forwards and the 10 ton block also have a trolley that moves at an inverted angle and that's why there's eight medium motors in the in the crane. To make the control of the crane a lot easier I built in IR sensors or remote control sensors um, and I used four of those sensors so I used all the channels that LEGO gives us just for, for the winch house. That means that the, the slewing and the luffing is then currently manual switches that I need to operate. The nice thing about the crane is, is that on the 10 ton block, you can pick up a load very, very close to the tower, move it up right through the other four blocks, right to the tip of the mast without any interference. And that means that if you have a, a U-boat or a small vessel, that you've lifted out of the water but you need to remove the engine. With the same crane you can lift the boat then or the vessel out of the water and you can then rig the motor and lift that out without having to employ another crane. You can then, after the motor has been lifted, move it right back onto the barge deck and put it down and the maintenance crew could work on the diesel motors then. Another nice feature of this crane is that because of all the blocks being independent, um, you can lift a left and a right if you want to call it like that, but you can also link these blocks and then have them work in tandem where the two 350 ton blocks can join, be joined with a lifting arm and of a lift, or a spreader beam and they can lift a wider load at the same moment where you can also do that on the 50 ton blocks where they can either work independently or they can also work in tandem thank you for joining me in my lego room if you enjoyed the show like and subscribe and hit the notification button